It's good to see you this morning. As you can tell, we're not at the church. Uh, unfortunately, I got exposed to someone that has COVID, and so I've tried to quarantine myself. Uh, today is the 14th day since I have been around that person, and I'm fine. So I think everything will be good, but just out of precaution, we decided to, to do it on video and, uh, and then uh, continue back at the church next Sunday. It's good to, that everybody's here. I hope everybody's tuning in. Um, I know a lot of people said they enjoyed uh, having the services uh, on video, and uh, it took me a little while to get used to it, but I'm, I'm doing a lot better uh, with it. And, and so uh, today uh, we decided to do it in the church, um, mainly because uh, my son room is in chaos. I've got grandchildren there and their toys everywhere. And uh, so anyway, no, but we really uh, thought it would be not a nice thing to do it in the sanctuary. So this morning, uh, I told you last Sunday that Jonathan would be here and he was gonna sing for us and bring the message. And so uh, unfortunately, you're not gonna be able to be here to see him, but you're definitely gonna be able to be here to hear him. Uh, he's going to sing a song in just a few minutes and then bring the message this morning. So um, just uh, keep each other in prayer. Uh, let's try to be flexible uh, with all the things that are going on. Um, you know, we had a saying in the mission field over in Haiti, uh, blessed are the flexible for they shall not be bent out of shape. And I think that's kind of where we um, have to be. We just have to learn to be flexible. So thank y'all for understanding. And at this time, I'm gonna turn the service over to Jonathan. He'll sing a song and then bring the message.
So good morning. Um, thank you guys for having me this week. Um, you'll notice that uh, I think we recorded that music song yesterday, so I didn't do a quick change of wardrobe. We just uh, were here the next day recording this. Um, and uh, it's great to have you guys uh, join us this morning. Um, so again, thanks for having me. I know that uh, Dad records every week or he writes a message every week and I have a lot of respect for writing a message because this is hard. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not easy to do and I get the luxury of being able to just come in and, and preach once. You know, the Lord put this on my heart uh, a few weeks ago and um, I wrote it down and uh, I've been working on it ever since. So props to Dad, props to other pastors that are writing um, sermons on a weekly basis. Um, that's not an easy thing to do. So if you do like the sermon, if you get anything out of this today, know that uh, you know I have a lot of time to prepare this. And if you don't, um, I guess you can submit a complaint to the Turkey Branch Complaint Department, which I think is rbnice at yahoo.com. So you can uh, send that on over there. But um, it's great to be here with you guys. I know y'all didn't uh, want to hear me ramble. You just wanted to hear from the Lord this morning when you tuned in. So we're going to dive straight in to uh, Galatians chapter 5. We're going to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit um, this morning. And so we'll start at verse 16. We're going to jump down to verse 22 here in a second. So we start in Gal Galatians 5, chapter uh, chapter 5, verse 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. And if we jump down to 22, it goes into the, the, the gifts of the, the fruits of the Spirit. So, uh, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance or patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And so we're actually going to go uh, into Matthew chapter 7 as well this morning to read another passage uh, that really gets to the point of why I felt like those fruits of the Spirit were on my heart and why the Lord was putting it on my heart. So Matthew chapter 7, starting in verse 16 through verse 20. Um, by their fruit, you will recognize them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Likewise, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear good or bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus, by their fruit, you will recognize them. And so, my question to you this morning is, is, what are you producing in your life? Are you producing good fruit? Are you producing bad fruit? And the reality is, uh, our fruit is how we're going to be recognized as the body of Christ as believers. Um, I looked up the definition for fruit, and fruit is the seed-bearing structure of a plant. It's the part of the plant that actually reproduces. So I think it's super important that God would use the analogy of the fruits of the Spirit, calling them fruits, because it's the seed-bearing part. It, it produces good things. It actually recreates. And so I often ask myself, what kind of fruit am I bearing? And what am I doing? The question that I've had for myself often is, what am I actually doing that's mattering to someone else for eternity? Like, what, what kind of dent am I making on eternity? Is my, is my life mattering to someone, not just to feel good, but to actually matter to someone for eternity? When people think back on their lives, do they think of me? You know, I've always wanted to live that kind of life where people look back, when people get old and they look back on their lives, they think of Jonathan Neese because it actually, I actually made an impact on their life because I bore fruit in my life. 
Um, you know, I, I, I know that I do music, and a lot of times, you know, my title technically at it, 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 the church that I work at is music director, but, you know, I, I feel that my calling is not just to get up and lead music, but it's to actually invest in people's lives, to be a pastor and to pastor people, because the reality is at the end of someone's life, when they look back, they're not going to think about back in 2020 when Jonathan sang this song and it was unbelievable, but that they will remember the time when Jonathan sat across the table from him and had coffee and talked to them about Jesus Christ and I accepted Christ that morning. That kind of stuff reproduces itself. And it doesn't really matter what stage of life you're in. Young, old, all of us have this calling to bear fruit in our lives and to reproduce good things that the Lord has put in our hearts and in our lives. So an example of this, uh, a story, um, a buddy of mine, Roy McClung, uh, went to a church that my dad pastored over in, uh, in Waycross. And he came and he had lunch with us one time. He had lunch with our family. And I believe, I, I'm not for sure, uh, I think he was 82 years old at the time. So he was in his 80s. And um, just in, he had this, this, he was being led by the Spirit, right? And so he had this prompt in his heart that he had this guitar that he wanted to let someone you know, borrow. He's like, I feel bad. I don't ever use it. And so he brought it up at lunch, and I'd never really thought of doing anything music related before that. And he's like, I should be looking for someone to teach. And and uh, I was like, man, I would love to do that. And so I took him up on it, and he uh, he met with me. I think two times. It was such a small investment, uh, but he was living by the Spirit, and his fruit that he that he was bearing in his life affected me, and it changed the whole trajectory trajectory for my life. Um, and so it was a life-changing thing. He was 82 years old. I had the honor of uh, singing at his funeral, um, dang, I think it was a couple of years ago now. Uh, but what a great man. I believe he was 96 years old when he passed away. So he was faithful all the way to the end. And he was bearing fruit that actually mattered for eternity for someone else. Um, so when we think about what's being produced out of our lives, why is it really important? Why is that important? Especially today, I feel like it's important because we have, we're in a time where there's false prophets. There's craziness going on in our world. It's not secure and um, there's a lot of just chaos going on. And my question is, how are people going to be able to determine who the good people are? How are people going to be able to determine who you are? They're going to be able to determine who you are, it says in the word, by the fruit that you bear in your life. And as people come, as false prophets come, as, as, and these things are happening in these end times that we're seeing right now. As people come, we will be able to also recognize them by their fruit. If you're confused on what you should believe or what's going on, look at the person's life. Look at the fruit that they're bearing. And that will give you a determination of what camp they're in, you know? And so I know that it, it, it's how we would be, long, be, be known that we should be constantly taking inventory in our lives of, of the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Like, what are we doing to have joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control? Um, all of those things will set us apart. And it's no different than what Jesus did. Jesus was set apart in his time. And the word holiness, he was holy, that's what it actually means. It means to be set apart. He was different. And he was different in a good way. Why? Because he was not living a life led by the flesh. He was living a life led by the Spirit. And when you're truly doing that, people are attracted to it. And people would follow him around as he would go from town to town because he had something that was desirable. He was living a life set apart, led by the Spirit. And so that's what we're called to do, is that we are called to be set apart, led by the Spirit. And we have this fruits of the Spirit as a guide on what we can highlight in our lives. So we know that the flesh is acting. We read earlier, and when we started our, our scripture reading this morning in uh, Galatians chapter 5, that the Spirit is actually acting contrary to the flesh. The flesh desires things that are contrary to the Spirit. And we have to be aware of this as we go about our daily lives because there are things that are going to happen that our knee-jerk reaction is to react in the flesh. But we can't do that. We have to be led by the Spirit. And that is a daily 
decision. I often think about, um, I believe it's in, in Luke where uh, Jesus is talking to Peter and he's saying, what do you have to do to follow me? You have to daily take up your cross. It's a daily decision. Deny yourself and daily take up your cross and follow me. So same with this. As we were led by the Spirit, we have to daily decide that we are going to be led by the Spirit. And so I'm going to ask a couple of questions that have to do with what's going on in the world today. A couple of how-tos, how do we do this? And you'll see the contrast between the flesh and the spirit. And so the first one is, how do we stand for injustice on our knees? Right? There's a lot of us being able to stand up for things that are happening in this world. But God doesn't call us. Jesus, if you look at his life, he doesn't call us to take up a sword. He calls us to get on our knees. If you look at Jesus' life, it's constantly being humble. He's constantly humbling himself all the way up to the cross to where he would even give his very life for us. Many people thought that Jesus would come with a sword to take the throne, but he did the exact opposite. So how do we stand for injustice on our knees? What does it look like to show, to show joy in our anger? If you're looking at your life right now, and, and, and there's a lot to be angry about. Honestly, there's a lot of things that are going on that make me very angry for my kids, for society, uh, for the church, for the things that are going on. There's a lot of things that make me angry, but how do we show joy through that? Is our lives literally just painting a big picture of anger to where when people look back on their lives and they think of Jonathan Neeson, you're just like, yeah, man, he was just an angry person. Like that is not the fruit that God wants you to bear in your life. Anger is not what we want to be to the world. So regardless of whether we are angry, that's the flesh. The flesh in us is the anger. you know. And it's okay to have righteous anger sometimes, but we can't let it consume us and we can't let it be what we show the world all the time. We have to show God the, or the world the joy of the Lord that's in us. So how do we have anger how do we have joy in your anger how are we to love those that hate us now there's a lot of hate going on right now uh, i think especially for for christianity for for good morals for things that are that are that we know to be right that people would say it's wrong but you know we're still blessed in this country there are people in other uh, areas of the world that are losing their lives but how do we love those that are hating us because that's what Jesus did. You know, Jesus came and a lot of times people thought that he was going to abolish the law of the Old Testament. We live under grace now, but actually Jesus did not come, it says in the word, to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. And actually he called us to a higher standard than the Old Testament did. He would say, thou shalt not murder in the Old Testament, but then he would say that if you even hate someone in your heart that you've already created and you've already committed murder in your heart, so Jesus called us to a higher standard. He would say that if someone would slap you in the face, that you would turn the other cheek. That that's a harder standard to live up to. So how are we loving those that are hate, hateful towards us? How do we have patience and kindness in the midst of a chaotic world that is anything but patient or kind right now? How are we supposed to be patient and kind? I, I, I think this is one of the ones that I have to take inventory on the most because the situations in the world has done anything but create an environment of patience. Like, I'm a, I'm a father of three. I have a five-year-old girl, a three-year-old boy, and a 10-month-old boy. And we have actually been building a house. So we've been, this whole in quarantine, we, we closed on our house the week that quarantine started of where we're living. And we've been in one bedrooms ever since with a family of five. So obviously that does not foster an environment of patience. And if you have any kids, you understand that patience is always being tested. But I want my kids to think of me as a person that has peace and kindness through that. I don't want my kids to look back on their life and just think that, man, God, Jonathan, or my dad was not a patient person. Um, we have to keep our patience. You know, we have the iconic driving down here seeing it's four, four hours. It should be a four hour drive, but honestly, it takes about five or six with three kids in the car and the stops that we have to do. But you have the iconic uh, 
are we there yet question over and over and over and over again. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And one of the funny things I think is uh, um, Evan, our oldest, the daughter, she kept asking, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Testing my patience. I'm like, Lord Jesus, please help me with my patience. Um, and then she finally said, you know what? We're, we're here, Dad. We're here in Savannah. You know how I know? And I was like, how do you know? She said, because there's hair on the trees. <laughs> and uh, I guess she's talking about the, the moss, you know, the iconic kind of uh, Savannah moss that hangs from the oak trees. I, I love it. It's so beautiful. But I just thought that was a funny uh, realization that she had. But you've got to stay patient even though the, you know, the kids are, are asking and the, the situations of, the light, of your life aren't necessarily creating an environment that is conducive for patience and kindness. Um, we have, uh, in Matthew 7, we read from the second scripture that we read from. Uh, there's also a parable that Jesus would tell, and he would tell about building uh, these two houses. One was built on the sand, y'all are probably familiar with it, and one was built on the rock. When the rains came and the floods came, the house that was built on the sand to- toppled over. But the house that was built on the rock stood firm. And one of the things I think I've read over a lot is the, uh, is the rains came and the floods came. Well, what are the rains and the floods? They are the situations of, of, of this life. They are the craziness of this world right now. And if we have our heart and our hope set in Jesus Christ, the rock, the firm foundation, then we will be able to have patience in a world that's crazy and has lost its mind, it seems like, lately. So how do we... Um, how do, we have, how do we keep self-control in a world that's lost control? I think that self-control has a direct connection to our witness. And right now, oh man, our witness is on highlight right now. Because what do we have today that we've never had in the history of humankind? We have social media. We have social media. And I believe the world would be radically different right now if people would show a little bit of self-control in relation to, self, uh, to, to social media. Um, our gut jerk reaction a lot of times when we are angry about things and when we are frustrated about things, when we've lost our patience, when we've lost our kindness, is to just go and post stuff online. And I just want to encourage you guys to take a moment, pray about stuff before you post it, pray about things before you actually put it out there because your witness is everything. And if you flippantly just put something out there You could be destroying your witness. People will then, guess what? They don't have to listen to you. And so then they will just block you out of their life. And if you were a person that's walking in the fruits of the Spirit, people won't want to block you out of their life. I believe people will want to come to you for wisdom. People will want to be around you more because you're a person that exhibits these things. How can we be gentle in an abrasive world that's brash, how can we be good when the world is flip-flopped? Me and Dad were talking about this the other day that, like, you know, we know end times are, are, are a thing right now because it seems like everything that's good in society is bad now. Everything that's bad is looked at as good. So how are we supposed to be goodness in a world that doesn't even see goodness the way that it's supposed to be seen? These are all quite crazy questions. I know I'm asking a lot of questions, and you're probably sitting there yourself like, yeah, how the heck do we do that? Well, I believe that we can't really do it. And I promise you that if you try in your own power, you're not going to be the list that you see in Galatians 5 of the fruits of the Spirit. You're going to be the list that they talk about before. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be angry. Because we can't do this in our own power. Everything that I just listed are contrary to our natural reactions. And so we have to abide in the Holy Spirit. We have to let the Spirit lead us. The Holy Spirit provides provides the richest versions of all of the fruits of the Spirit. And so this is what's really powerful about, about abiding in the Holy Spirit and letting the Holy Spirit be the one that produces that fruit in your life. Because joy... Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, patience, uh, um, self-control, all of these things, anything that you've known to be good is even better in Christ's eyes. Like He is joy to an infinitely more degree than any joy that we've ever experienced on this 
earth. And any goodness that we have known, God is so much more good than anything we've ever experienced. Any patience that we've experienced, God is infinitely more patient. I mean, think about all the times in your life. Think about the Israelites even back then. How many times they turned away from God and God was still patient. God was still good. And so anytime you think you know justice, anytime you think you know mercy, anytime you think you know anything good, God is that infinitely more than anything you've ever found out before. And so when we set our hope and our foundation in the Holy Spirit, we find all of the fruits of the Spirit in our lives to the hundredth degree. And my challenge to you right now, today, as we think about our lives, is to do inventory, like constantly think about that list. And so for you this morning, maybe you're, you, you look through that list, you read through it again in, Gal in Galatians 5. Read through the list of the fruits of the Spirit and let the Holy Spirit lead you on the one that you could really work on and focus on this week. So for me, like I said, it's been, it's been patience, honestly. In a, in a crazy time right now where, gosh, our family's in desperate need of patience. My wife can testify. We both are not great at it, and we're working on it together. But I find so much more success when I'm working on it through the power of the Holy Spirit, when, I, when I'm letting Him develop patience within me. Because the well of patience that the Holy Spirit has is so much greater than any that I can muster up on my own. And so we go to God and we go to the Holy Spirit to lead us in these fruits so that we would live a life that would be set apart, that would be holy. Now, in this time, I'm telling you like that the world is looking for people like this. The world is looking for people that are actually living these things out. They may not know it, but when they come encounter with someone who's actually walking in the fruits of the Spirit, someone's actually being led by the Spirit, it is a very attractive thing that people will grab onto. And the sad thing is, is I believe that a lot of the church and a lot of what we're doing right now, it isn't attractive. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're dropping the ball on being led by the Spirit. And therefore, people aren't being led to the church. They're being led away from it. So my challenge to you this morning, like I said, is that we will read through Galatians 5 again, read through the list of, of, of the fruits of the Spirit, and think about the one that you want to work on this week, or maybe two of them, uh, and let the Holy Spirit lead you. We have to abide in the Holy Spirit and let Him lead us into a Spirit-led life. So you pray with me now. So God, we thank You for Your Word. Uh, we thank You that it's truth in a world that's changing so much. Even in society, um, what, what they're saying to be true is changing every day, it's changing every year, and it doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. A lot of us are confused. All of the stuff that's going on right now, one person says this, one person says this, and we don't know what to do. We're pulled in a million different directions. And so God, we thank you for your word, how it has, does not change. We thank you for your heart, how it does not change, and your word is truth. The truth doesn't change doesn't matter what happens, it doesn't change. So we can take comfort this day and age, knowing that we have a constant to go to. And it's your word. And this morning, just as your word said, Lord, we have these, these fruits of the spirit that we want to live out, Lord, we want to be led by the spirit. So I pray, Lord, that you would help us, that you would help us to walk in the fruits of the Spirit, that you would help us be led by your Spirit so that we would be set apart, that we would look like Jesus, and people would be attracted to the life that we live and that it would matter to people for eternity. Will we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, Y'all have a great week, and uh, bless you guys.